chill. Thanks, Maria. Um, for the night, um, but some really great updates too. Um, so yeah, Maria, do you want me to share the screen? Yes, would you? Yeah. Oh Thank wait, you. I you didn't make me a co-host, sorry. Oh. <laughs> All right, everybody, we're, we're getting there. <laughs> um, I hope everyone had a lovely week. It's almost, we're almost there, we're almost Friday. Um, for those of you who celebrate Easter, hopefully it goes well too. It's a nice weekend uh, with family. I feel like it's gonna be rainy. Oh, man. Big hunts. Probably. All right. Whenever you're ready. Okay, sweet. I'm just pinpointing this. Here we go. Can y'all see that? Yes, we can. Thank you, Kylie. All right. So there's some good stuff happening tonight, uh, some updates, some upcoming events. Um, but here is our agenda for the evening. Uh, welcome, everyone, again. Thanks so much. I'm MJ, uh, Fieldwork Manager, and here with my amazing co-host, Kylie, who's part of the Advocacy Program, um, which is amazing and uh, excited to be here tonight with you all. I wanted to not, uh, I apologize. I'm not trying to call anyone out. I just see Deborah Mayer. Are you, uh, apologies if you're not, are you new to Common Power? No. Okay. But I'm not always here. <laughs> no, that's that's fine. I just wanted to call out, I love seeing new faces. So I don't think maybe we've met each other in person before or, you know, Zoom. So I just wanted to make sure um, and welcome you to the space. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> All right, awesome. So do you want to go ahead and um, go through the agenda or do you think we just go ahead and start, Kylie? Um, here, sorry. I'm having a little screen sharing issues. Do you want, uh, me, to, you want me to go? No, 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 no worries. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure I got okay. this. Okay, cool. But yeah, I think that, yeah, everyone can read the, the, agenda. <laughs> the agenda. Sorry, did I switch it? Hold on. Okay. Um, but yeah, we're just going to go through some department updates and, um, you know, we're going to hear from the fieldwork team. We're going to hear from CP future. Um, we're going to hear from fundraising. Uh, so yeah, it'll be, that's the agenda here. Sorry, y'all. I'm having some issues. <laughs> Happens. Uh, also, it's awesome. I, I know that like maybe more people will trickle in, but this is actually kind of, you know, it's nice to also sometimes have this intimate uh, group so we can chat more about what's happening at CP. Um, what are you knitting? See, I love this. <laughs> what are you having? Uh, side conversations, I love it. Yeah, what are you knitting, Ben? Let us know. Um, I'm not actually, I'm just practicing my stitching because I've never knit before. So oh. it's just like a, it's just like rows. It's just rows, guys. It's just rows. <laughs> That's cool though. That's nice. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Ben. Um, okay. Yeah. So we'll go over field work. We have a CPP. Well, have you got any new people? What was that? Do you have anybody who's new? First time? At so a... I, I thought that Deborah was new. I was wrong. <laughs> I don't think we have no. any. I don't believe. Uh, yeah. I just didn't recognize that. Uh, her face, like her, but um, Scott and Deborah. Um, Deborah spent quite a bit of time with us out in the field. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, and then Scott, I feel like I've seen your name for sure. I just don't recognize. I'm really bad with names, faces. I can recognize, but um, thanks for being here. I think other than that, though, I don't think we have new folks. Charles, who's this Puya guy? What is who's that? Like, what is that? Puya, let me tell you. I'm fairly new to CP. Um, you know, I'm here to just learn more about, Puya, you know, what CP. Hey, Puya, I have this really amazing program for college students, and I think you'd be perfect to join. Yeah. All right, we, we need them. No, we, need them we need them in field work, actually. We, we need them in field work. <laughs> okay, well, actually, okay, well, hold up. Scott says, I'm relatively new, still learning about CP. We love that, Scott. Thanks for joining us tonight. I don't know if anyone else has met Scott before. I, I have not, but You're thanks welcome. for joining us. And I hope that this is helpful for you to continue to learn about us and who what we do and where we're headed. Um, so thank you for joining us. Okay, so 
first on the agenda is just like a huge, huge shout out to the Wisconsin team, to the folks, 35 plus folks, I believe, who are on the ground uh, from uh, April 30th to May, to April, oh my God, what am I saying? Uh, March 30th, sorry, to April 4th, uh, 4th 5th. Um, and so thanks so much for the work that y'all did. It's incredible. Six, 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 six. Oh, oh, six thousand two hundred thirty-three tours. That's amazing. So shout out to all in the pictures. Shout out to the folks in the room right now: Asha, Puya, uh, Ben, Charles. I mean, it's just incredible, honestly. And the win feels amazing. Uh, we also had a watch party, um, the the an election watch party that went amazing. So you know, it it was really truly. A, uh, and Jessica, thank you, thank you, yes, Jessica, Louis, who was also on the ground, y'all did amazing work. And I would love to hear from Charles or anyone, obviously, or Puya, whoever wants to talk about their experience down there. I know, I mean, you guys went through um, some crazy weather as well. So I commend all the amazing work that y'all did in that seven day, <laughs> um, seven days in Wisconsin. Anyone wanna, who wants to tell us a little bit more about the experience down there? Everybody does, Every, everybody does. Um, yeah. We are. I tapped for you to say something um, since he's just relaxing in Wisconsin right now uh, with nothing much else to do. And because Ben is busy knitting, so we gotta gotta let Puya talk. No, can somebody can somebody screen share some pictures? Who's driving right now? Let's let's throw some pictures up. I know we're we're kind of doing this ad hoc. Um, I don't have any, so <laughs> yeah, it would have to be somebody from the, I don't know who wants to get the folder. All right. While we work on that, we're going to let Puya talk to us about, um, how, our numbers out there and what some of the partners were saying about us. Puya, um, said he didn't want to go on camera, but I said that people should see what, uh, how much he sacrificed for field work. So Puya, you want to? You want to show us how you're how you're feeling, man? Yeah, I was just uh, you know, I'll turn on my camera in a minute. Uh, but hello, everybody. I think most of you know me, but if you don't, I'm Puya. Um, I am part of the fieldwork team, and I was on the ground um, leading the team with Ben and Jessica and Charles, and um, it was absolutely amazing um, to be here to have this opportunity to work at this race. Um, it is not an exaggeration to say that Janet Perdusevich's election and race was the most important election of 2023. Um, and I am grateful that I was able to be a part of it um, and able to help elect Janet for 10 years on the Wisconsin Supreme Court. This is the first time in 15 years that a that liberals have the opportunity that have the majority on the Wisconsin Supreme Court. So um there was a lot writing of this election. Um and I am grateful that CP and I were able to be there. In terms of what this means um for CP and uh for really a state of Wisconsin, I think democracy persevered. Um, as some of you may know, Democrats have been able to win statewide elections in the state of Wisconsin, um, not by as, like big margins, but, you know, relatively big, um, you know, one, two percent here and there, sometimes even more. But when it comes to state legislature, they are losing by 50 percent, um, roughly 30 percent some of the elections that they're supposed to win. Um, yeah, so they, you know, so the 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 state is basically it's evenly split fifty fifty, and either any statewide positions that that the Dems control, you win by like fifty one percent. Yeah, but the state ledge is controlled by Republicans, like two thirds to one third. So it's not representative of how people are actually feeling. Yeah, in Wisconsin, and, and the thing is that. As a result, politicians can do whatever they want um, and don't feel any sort of responsibility or accountability 
to the voters. Um, they can pass policies or not pass policy, policies that voters are actually asking for, um, and they just get away with it. So we finally have the opportunity to change that. Uh, and also in Wisconsin, there is a law from 1849 when women could not vote, when people of color could not vote, when people who did not own property could not vote, when only white men who owned property could vote. There is a law from that time that does not allow women to make choice over their own bodies. And we finally have the opportunity to take that law off the books in Wisconsin. And that is huge. So uh, for me, I'm grateful to have had the opportunity. As MJ said, we did more than 6,000 doors um, over five days in cold weather, in 20 degree weather, in rain and snow. Uh, we talked to more than 2,000 people, which is absolutely amazing. So um, really, really, really good results. Really happy with what has happened and thankful to Ben, Charles, and Jessica for, for being there with them. Oh, wow. I love all that, Puya. Thank you for your leadership, man. I mean, you've been, <laughs> I feel like you've been to literally every state. I mean, last year, um, you were everywhere and you continue to do, to be everywhere. And also, um, I think you give a lot to, to the fieldwork team and to, to the work. So thank you for being that leader. Um, also, yeah, if you can, if anyone go to Wisconsin in these circumstances, and we go anywhere, like, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing folks in Virginia um, in June. Seriously. Can we, Ben, do you got something to add to that? Because yeah, um, yeah, I think that, uh, actually, can you say something specifically um, about action assembly that we rolled out in the field? Because I think that was a, that was a big thing that we launched on this trip that we've kind of tested in other parts. No, wait, throw the pictures back up there too. Okay. Hold on. Those are good. Yeah. Um, yes. So actually, I wonder if there's a, a picture about Action Assembly in here. Patty, do you mind scrolling until I stop? Keep going, keep going, keep going. And stop, 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 stop. Okay, okay. Go down a little bit. Yeah. So you see all those people going in a circle right there. Um, so that. So what we did in this trip that is um, a little bit different than previous trips is that we actually built out programming for political education and leadership development. So in other trips in the past, we've kind of just done this organically, right? Like we've had young leaders on the ground with us. We paid attention to them and invested in them, giving them opportunities. Um, and we've like gone out of our way to invite people to speak to us or to go towards historical sites or to educate ourselves about the communities that we work in. But this is the first trip where we actually did that before the trip happened. <laughs> um, so like we planned out a leadership development panel where we invited organizers who were volunteering with us on this trip to talk about their experiences, why they do this work, why do they keep doing this work. And I think our younger volunteers got a lot out of that. I certainly did, hearing about the different perspectives from grassroots organizing all the way up to campaign work. Um, and what you're seeing right now, right here in this circle is Dan Schaefer a journalist um, who covers poli uh, Wisconsin politics and voting rights coming to talk to us about the stakes of this election. And he's not the only one. Uh, we invited a recently retired professor um, and a super volunteer that we partner with in Racine, Wisconsin as well. And they just kind of like talked to us about why this election mattered. I think as out-of-state volunteers, we recognize that we go in and we make an impact and then we leave, right? Um, but it is quite another thing to have locals, people who have been here before us and will continue to live the impact that we created after we leave to tell us how important it is that we are here and the work that we are doing. So I think both of those things together really brought the group towards that common purpose that we had on the ground and um, really made it so that I, I really think that was like a peak bonding moment for why we were here and what we were going to do. And honestly, that pulled us through the weather, pulled us through all the crises that we had and everything above. So Action Assembly launched to great success.
Yeah, and kudos to y'all. Yeah, I was just going to say, I want to commend Ben because Ben also, you know, before the trip, uh, there was a lot of conversations around how do we make, you know, how do we intentionally do this more often in our, in our, in travel? Um, because we do, you know, as Common Power, we do, uh, our, our biggest value is our community. And, you know, we do the work because we are this really strong community that has come together for a lot of many other re different reasons, different for different states, for different work. So it's really cool to see how we are intentionally now providing this um, this space um, that was that was intentionally created and kind of uh, led by um, and thought of by by Ben and like the rest of the fieldwork team. So thank you, Ben, for leading us in that. Yeah, great work, everybody. Like you said, on to Virginia. Yes, yes. And there will be more on that very soon. We're waiting uh, one more step with our partners and then we'll have more details. Um, but definitely we will let you all know when we're ready to ramp folks up for Virginia. Uh, lots of work there. So yeah, awesome. Thanks, uh, Ben. Thanks, Puya. Thanks, Charles um, and the rest of the team that was down there supporting this incredible and momentous uh, work and uh, election. Awesome. Yeah. I feel like I'll just say one last thing. I feel like this really shows, you know, the progress that we're making towards creating really intentional community and like being in spaces like this with one another. Yeah. Um, so well, I'm just so inspired by what y'all are doing. Thank you. Yes, love it. Awesome. Let's um, move forward with our agenda. Yes. Okay. I got this better now <laughs> <laughs> you're good you're good okay so luckily we do have someone representing cp future today here on in the space larcy um tell us a little bit about what this upcoming action academy application like what you know where people can find it um how, how do you feel about this coming up so soon absolutely absolutely so first of all i want can can you stop uh sharing really quick i just wanted to make a really really cool shout out so at some point there was like 14 or 15 of us on the screen and i was just counting but there's nine young folks on this zoom right now that are come from the action academy pipeline and ecosystem and that is amazing so that is a testament to a program that can funnel in young folks develop their leadership, and then hear outcomes of successes out there from the field. Um, just in this current uh, past set of travels that we've done, either in Virginia Beach or in, in Wisconsin. So we are doing it again. Uh, applications for Action Academy 2023 is launching this Monday. And I just want to say a big thank you to Ben to Jessica, to Kylie, to Asha, to Julia, to Jordan, to Jenny. And I think Ellie was on here with us a few seconds ago, but these are the cohorts of all the young people who are joining this movement with us and really bringing in new ideas. Um, yes, the OGs, new ideas and new approaches to doing this work so that it can be sustainable, so that they can be in their you know, in their uh, 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s, still having a lifestyle of activism. And in order for that to happen, we've got to have intergenerational interactions because we've got to hear from the older folks who've been doing this, what it's, what it's meant to have them be sustained in this and also have, a, have an interaction for new ideas to be accepted and how we can sustain this further into the future. So that is one formula that we have really, really improved upon. Um, and so we are going to welcome a new 2023 cohort this summer. No different than what they've been learning before about voting rights history, how they can get plugged into civic engagement and be the next generation leaders for their 2024 general election coming up. That is an, another crucial year for us to go out there and door knock and engage with voters. I am sure in the midst of who is going to come into this new cohort, we will find the next Julia's, the next Kylie's, the next Ben's and the next Puyo's in all of it because they are out there. 
and the last midterm election, we know Gen Z's showed up and we want to seize that opportunity of young folks who want to engage in our democracy. And we will be at the forefront of guiding them, mentoring them, and allowing them to have a space and community to practice that leadership so that they can go out there and we can see the, the, you know, the outcomes of what young leaders can do. And the great example of what's happening right now in Tennessee, how students are protesting at the Capitol for safety, for how their lives are, are at risk and how they're showing up so that they can have a society where it is inclusive, it is, it is justice oriented. So um, we're looking forward to that. Please, once you see the application go live, we will, we will distribute it, send it out to anyone who you think is uh, a young person who should be in a program like this, or if you know of anyone who knows of other young people or a young or has a, um, connections to, to young people, they need to see the, they need to be participating in the, in the program as well. So I hope that you will distribute that for us. Um, and we all just really look forward to meeting uh, the new faces for Action Academy for 2023. And the application Marcy, will be, can you, oh, go oh. ahead. No, I was gonna say, can you tell us how young you say young people and that's, I think it's relative for some. Oh folks, yes, so. so it's 18 to 24 is kind of the nice, or uh, just the age window that we have. So college bound, college age students. Um, if you know of anyone who fits that demographic, then please send the application to them. Love that. Thank you. And then, so the application will also live on the CB Future website. Is that, I mean, the yes, page? It will go live on the website. We will be doing um, weekly reminders of, of, of how the application will be open. So it'll be open for an entire month because we want to capture as many um, and distribute as many places and make the connections that we need so that we can pipeline a bunch of young people into the program this year. Awesome. Um, and also just to your point, I want to just shout out everyone. I mean, you met, you kind of already shouted them, shouted out some folks um, or all the folks from the, from the OG uh, Action Academy, um, but also just like the new, the new folks and also just like knowing that they actually are, yeah, like you said, right, they're actually in leadership positions right now within Common Power, which is insane to think about. I mean, I remember when you launched Action Academy with Kylie and Ben and the folks who are in this, some of the folks who are in this room, and it's like insane to see how cool and amazing, you know, and, and the, the amazing leaders they've become within Common Power. I mean, Ben is in fieldwork now, you know, Puya is, they're both my colleagues within the fieldwork uh, department. Jessica Louie is our amazing remote uh, operations uh, within field work. Uh, Kylie, of course, uh, full staff members. Like, this, it's just incredible to see that growth. Uh, Jenny and Ellie now also leading events with field work. Uh, Asha also in finance. It's 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 really cool to just see um, all the positions that they've taken over the last couple of years um, and 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 taking those those leadership positions within Common Power. And we'll see more, right? More people as they come through those, through that funnel. Thank you, Larcy. Um, awesome. Um, okay, what is next? I guess. <laughs> next is um, the Institute. So updates Amazing. from um, Jordan. Hi everyone. Yeah, so we have a few things going on. Um, most importantly, I think right now, I was preparing for the, a new addition to the Truth Matters Initiative, which is up there. Um, we have a 24-hour teach-in coming up in May that is particularly in response to everything going on in Florida um, with, I think, just plain and simple, the attack on teaching history properly and fully um, and providing the information that I think students and teachers and everyone feel the, the need and the want for. So um, we're going to be hosting, like I mentioned, the 24-hour teach-in. I'll we'll have professionals from all over the country um, on a Zoom, a live Zoom for that entire period. And then also with Dr. Scott and um, Dr. San Jeffries and a few other folks, Charles will be there in Florida. They'll be at um, an extremely popular AME Church in St. Petersburg, well, where they've been gracious enough to host us um, in person. Yeah, Dr. Harry Edwards, a lot of even more people that we're continuing to partner with um, that will be on the ground, but then also virtually where we'll be able to have people chime in and provide, you know, insight. And we'll have civil rights heroes, ones we know and love and have wonderful relationships with, like Bob and Miss Joanne, 
participating and sharing their knowledge, but I think it's going to be a really great space to not only draw attention, but I think just get the word out about what we're doing. I believe it will be recorded. Yeah. So we'll be able to have a recap of it. We'll have it on multiple different platforms. It's going to be streaming on YouTube, Facebook. So it'll be, there'll be space for it on multiple different um, platforms and we'll be able to have people be able to rewatch it on YouTube and Facebook. Um, and I'm sure I'll post those links as well um, when the time comes post event. Um, but yeah, so we're just doing a lot preparing for um, the magnitude of this event, I think, and preparing at all angles for, um, I think, the benefits that are going to come from spreading awareness and also just, you know, being realistic and understanding, you know, risks and um, I think just the magnitude of going into this space and doing what we believe we need to do. Um, and I think trying to help the community there and overall holistically the entire country with um, spreading the word on how truth should be taught and how we'll continue to fight for that um, ability to teach history correctly. So working on that. And then we also have our foundational courses as well um, that are gonna be going on, continuing. So Dr. Scott has hers. I know Teresa mentioned that um, she was at Dr. Scott's lecture yesterday. So she has a few coming up next couple of weeks. And then in May, Dr. San Jeffries will kind of follow the, the rain and um, move into the civil rights movement post um, reconstruction, which Dr. Scott's discussing this month. So those are our main three uh, items, I think currently, but really focusing on the truth and right now, ensuring it can go as seamlessly as possible and preparing for that. It's, it's uh, something I think we all feel really near and dear to our hearts, just because we we understand the importance of, you know, teaching history in order to go out and continue making a difference in the field and, you know, having people realize the need to go out and, you know, push for the vote. So we're excited about that. Thank you, Jordan. Thank yeah, you for course. those updates. Yeah. Great job on the flyers, Jordan. Jordan made those oh, flyers. Oh, that was thanks. So yes, I was going to test. I saw it, a live workshop. Oh, you did? Yeah. You, Kylie did help. Kylie, Julia. No, they were no. all there. They were giving their input. They knew, yeah. Everyone we oh, had, a, good. We had a working period. Love together. it. Mm -hmm. It's like aesthetically pleasing. It's like straight to the point. I love it. Thank you. Um, no, I like the I like the one where it's like uh, has the different dates because it's like you already know the type of event that it is, right? And it has like yeah, it has like the different dates. So you just know what to expect. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, it's easy to read, which is awesome. Um, so those events, I do want to just like. Also, sneak peek, we might, we might actually, I'm planning to, <laughs> with Jenny and Ellie, our events, um, awesome field work uh, event planners, we're hoping to also have, we had a screening for one of the um, Truth Matters Initiative, um, I guess, lectures, and so we're hoping to also host something for the, um, one of the foundational um, uh, lectures, and also hopefully for the Truth in Education um, uh, sorry, screening. So we'll, we'll, you'll hear more about that. Stay tuned on compower.io. That's really mostly where we're going to be posting about these kind of different events. Um, and yeah, so stay tuned. Thanks, Maria. Also, I don't think we introduced Jordan, like Jordan is a, um, it works with the Institute. I could let, yeah, obviously. Her no, no, it was okay. Sorry. I didn't even think about it either. So when you said, <laughs> like, oh. yeah, I, I work in, um, in the Institute with Dr. Scott and Dr. Devin Geary, newly Dr. Devin Geary, and Celestia Hill also. So we're a team out there just trying to, I think, bring as many people as we can and to follow them to field work and get on the field. So that's our goal. We're teaching, um, well, not me teaching, but Dr. Scott doing the teaching and David. And then um, we support them in all, any and all the programs that they need help in. And um, I think just getting people as involved as we can is the goal. Yeah. Thanks, Jordan. All the work. It's awesome. And the whole team. So awesome. Thank you guys. Okay, cool. Of course. I think this is what's next. It was actually, yeah. So actually the events that Jordan just mentioned is were two of the ones that we're gonna talk about. So we can definitely go over the next one, which is Julia is gonna talk a little bit about the upcoming Action Academy um fundraiser. Hi everyone, thank you so much. Happy to be here. I love seeing familiar faces on the screen. Hi, Therese, good to see ya. 
Um, hi, Deborah. It's great to see you as well. But yeah, so we have an upcoming Action Academy fundraiser on April 13th from 5 to 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. It's going to be a virtual fundraiser. This is our third year for the fundraiser, and I'm honored to be able to shepherd it. So our goal for the fundraiser this year is $200,000. We're roughly at about $65,000 right now. Um, but we're going to have students come and talk about their experience. Um, you get to hear more about the Action Academy upcoming curriculum more in depth. Um, and just a note on a couple of things that we're fundraising for. This year, we're fundraising for five main things. Number one, our biggest bucket is our Action Academy stipends. Uh, we're expecting 150,000 for there. And then our Action Academy Summer Civic Leadership Retreat, which will be five days. We're gonna fly Action Academy students into Seattle. They're gonna get to do leadership workshops. That will be $10,000. And then we're also fundraising for guest speaker compensation, field work travel for 2024, and then crew lead compensation as well. So I'm gonna drop the link to register down in the chat and I hope to see you all there. And I also wanna pass it off to Larcy to talk a little bit more about um, the fundraiser and the agenda. So the the cool thing when we do about these fundraisers is that it is it you it's a chance to hear from the participants themselves how they journeyed through the program from education to action. Um, partly we know, and when we first built this program out, is that there is uh, something really powerful in 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 allowing in in building a program out that not just supports a community of civically minded individuals, but also access to programs like this. So part of the reason why we always fundraise for this is that after spending an entire summer with us virtually and spending over 300 hours with us over the summer is that students get a stipend. They learn a lot. They spend a lot of time with us and that is worth time that's compensatable for them and to them. And we have learned through the years that, you know, this is a form of financial freedom for them, that they're able to use the stipend for other things to continue on decision making that they that they can ease up on their financial burdens and stuff. So it is important that we compensate the participants. It's important that we compensate our guest lecturers because they are top of the field. There are scholars, they're academics, they are industry professionals who come in and really teach our cohort um, you know, anything uh, that supports our modules around the Voting Rights Act or Voting Rights Arc in, um, in America today, in our democracy today. So when we do the fundraiser, we hear a lot from the students and how it's impacted them, not just from educational standpoint, but just the ability to have a little bit of financial freedom throughout the summer because they get this really awesome stipend at the end of it. So happy to say that we are expanding our capacity. I do anticipate a big cohort this year. Um, we had a really, really good launch uh, last year where the crew leads came to Seattle and did a leadership retreat. And that was really great and really impactful. So we're gonna do it again this year. There is really something powerful when you are in person, in community with people, and we go through a really deep dive of, of leadership training. We're gonna partner with NAM, the National, um, African American Museum uh, organization this year to do some civic retreats and that's being spearheaded by some really cool creative ideas around how we engage with young uh, with young folks in the civic arena. Thanks to Ben for building out some of that new curriculum. So they are they're going to get to test their muscles about leadership about how to facilitate uh, civic engagement out there in the communities and we create that space for them. In order to do that there we need to have resources for them to be able to practice those muscles. So we are we always are very, very optimistic about the the amount that we want to raise um, because we always you know more often than not we reach it and then when we do, we get people like the people you're seeing on the screen. So they are out there and we want to get them. Thanks, Larcy and Julia. So awesome. Yeah, I can attest having gone through the program. It's made me civically active. <laughs> so yeah, thank you all. Awesome. I feel I'm not wrong. That was our agenda for today. 
Uh, wow. Awesome, because it gives us space to chat between all of us. Uh, yes, further together. I love it. Um, and, and answer any questions anyone may have. Um, so yeah, we open up the space for questions, thoughts, comments on the things that we went over today. Scott, what do you want to know more about? Yeah, love that. Thanks, Ben. Sorry to put you on the spot, man. <laughs> also, feel free to put it in the chat. <laughs> I was just yeah. that. Yeah. And, you know, we also um, can, if you have questions that you think of later, um, you can find, you know, how to reach us. Obviously, you made it to this meeting, so I'm sure you can find out to reach us, but you can contact us on commonpower.io, our online community platform, um, and there'll be updates on there all the time, and also by visiting our website, commonpower.org. So yeah, feel free to reach out if you think of anything later. Oh, the trees. Good question. So actually, to be real with you today, we actually did meet with our partners. Um, they are still trying to figure out who they're going to be endorsing. So that is something. So we're working with New Virginia Majority um, in Virginia, and they are um, going to be telling us more of what, you know, um, in um, at the end of April. So once we know exactly, the one thing we do know is that we will be we will be for sure in Virginia, June 15th, most likely to June 20th, which is the day of election day uh, for the primaries. Um, so we do know that. Um, I don't know, Ben, if you wanna add anything, um, Puyo is in that call as well. But yeah, for sure those dates, we may, may uh, travel before that, but that is uncertain right now because we don't know all the details. <laughs> ben Fuya, do you, do you want to add anything? Um, I would just say that if you are part of our fieldwork.io, um, look out for more updates through you know through that platform and our website. If you're not part of our .io space, please join, um, so you can get the most up to date information. Um, and if you are not able to travel, we do have remote opportunities as well. Um, including phone banks, text banks, um, and postcards. Uh, we'll try to put events together that you can do it in community, all of that stuff. So just join our .io page so you can get all the information. Yes, perfectly said. Cool, yeah. yeah. Also, um, as we move forward, also, you know, we'll know more. So another community meeting in May, we'll tell you more about what's happening and how you can uh, be engaged with that work. Um, so May will be, I think, when we will be more certain of things, um, or early May. And yeah, I think that's all we have for Virginia as of now. Um, but it's exciting. We will definitely be there again, of course, in the fall for the general election. So look out for that as well as we move forward. Any other questions or thoughts? Therese, block it off. Block it off oh, on your calendar. Yeah, Teresa and I met the other day. I saw her calendar. She's blocked it off. <laughs> Good. Yeah, all I needed was the dates. I. <laughs> it's Every, like block off all of 2024 plus half of 2023. That's right. That's right. Beautiful. <laughs> No, but always, 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 always black off. Always, the week thank the you, Ben. <laughs> no, election, I'm telling you, know. you it's, it's the weekend before election date. Always. Oh, oh yeah, election. totally. Election totally. Day. No, yeah. it, it was more the primary. But I, although I during this call, I looked up the date of the primary, and then I figured out the date. But it's it's nice to get confirmation. No, yeah, for we, sure, uh, we appreciate the question, Teresa. Yeah, we might, um, our where is still a little bit up in the air, but I think we might be getting sent to Arlington, so near Washington, D.C., yeah. um, at least for the primaries. But for the general, I think our partner definitely wants us want, wants us in Richmond at, as one of their cities. So um, that's kind of like looking forward, but not set in stone. Yeah. 
I already called it. I'm going to Richmond. <laughs> Maria, if it's the only location, we're all in Richmond. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's the only location, then yeah, okay. But if it sells the name anyway, I'm going to Richmond. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Uh, any, any other questions or thoughts? Are we in after credits? I think so. Not until okay, you stop cool. recording. Yeah, oh. we stop recording. <laughs> All right, hold up, hold up.